Boom. Did I scare you? Well, I probably didn't, although dressed like this, I probably am a little scary looking. Granny gear here for old guy on a bike. Well, there's a reason why I'm sitting in my own personal pumpkin patch on my front porch. And we'll get to that after the break. And we're going to be catching up on some things that are coming up. And uh, just a little bit of a, an interlude here video as I'm taking a little bit of time away, doing a little bit of family time and traveling. Anyway, this is what's coming up on Old Guy in a Bike. Stay tuned. You know, party people, man, they just got a plan. You know what I'm saying? They love having fun and, and doing the party thing and decorating and, and, and all of this, the pumpkin patch and the, the, the pretty cool uh, Halloween fedora. Well, oh, oh, and the Halloween socks. Got to show you my Halloween socks. Well, that's all due to a much-loved family member who just loves decorating and planning things, and, and they get such a joy out of it. And we had such fun decorating the house yesterday, and, uh, well, our front porch is now an inflatable pumpkin patch, which I had to deflate because the little fans that make these things puff up, they're not so good for audio recording, are they? Like little hair dryers in the background. Anyway, so, so this is what's been going on. First of all, <coughs> as you can tell, I don't quite sound like myself because I haven't quite been myself. Been sick for this next week. I'm still probably a few days from riding, and so I just haven't been doing very much. And uh, we've been trying to spend some quality family time this week, and so there really hasn't been a whole lot of videoing and YouTubing going on. But this is what I want to do with this video real quick for this week. I want to show you what's going on, what's coming up, because I do have something that, um, well, a few things actually that I think are, are finally starting to, to get going or are almost done, and I'm excited about that. Okay, to begin with, let's look at some tires. Are you tired of talking about tires and hearing about them? Well, if you are, you're going to continue to be tired for a while because nothing is changing so much right now, I think, well, for road and for gravel bike as tires and tire sizes. Look what's happening in road bikes. We're moving toward 32s almost as a norm for a lot of people if your frame can handle it. And almost all of the bikes, even race bikes, I heard the new Madone. Uh, the Trek Madone, you know, I think, isn't that what it's called? The new one, that thing can take like a 35 or something, which is, or maybe more. Wow, pretty crazy, eh? So that's a movement, isn't it? And in gravel bikes, that's the same trend. We're getting into bigger tires. Do you know recently? Spent some time on some 50s. And I've kind of pulled back a little bit, even though I saw the light. I tried 2.1s, and they just didn't quite fit on my gravel bike, but I that was an epiphany, and maybe sometime in my future, I'll have a gravel bike frame that will run that big a tire. In the meantime, I've kind of rolled back and been riding on some 45s again, because I think, honestly, the 45 millimeter size is going to be the sweet spot for most people for gravel. You may quote me. And along that line, I have been assembling a plethora, well, maybe a small plethora, of 45 millimeter wide gravel bike tires to sort through and try and tell you about. Now, you know, I've been on the WTV Vulpin and the Vulpin S in a 45. I'll be rolling back through those again. I've been on the S now for a little while. And then I've got some others to throw into the mix. Remember, at one point in time, I had ridden this. This was a Pirelli Cinturato Gravel RC in a 45. I've ridden it. I like this tire very much. I'm going to throw this back into the mix and compare because I have some new tires to try. From the Trek Bot Rager folks, we have the new, brand new Bitasso RSL GX aggressive gravel tire in a 700 by 45. Now, as you can see, it's kind of a, um, I wouldn't call it a micro knob, I'd call it more of a mini knob. And um, yeah. I think maybe that could be quite a decent all-around all around, uh, tread. We're going to find out. So I've got a set of these in 45s and also a set in 50s. And I'll get to that in a minute. Now, when you're talking about tires, when somebody recommends gravel bike tires, almost always, on like on a forum, somebody will mention the Specialized Pathfinder Pro. 
And I have a couple sets of these. I have a set in a 42 and I have a set in a 47. See, they don't make 45s, do they? Well, we'll see how the sizing works out for that. And um, we may end up testing the 47 as a 45 or the 47 as a 50. I don't know because I also have a couple of 50s. I've got a couple of 50s from WTB I'll be showing you. One I've already ridden on, one I haven't. And I also have this Potasso in a 50. And that's going to be quite interesting because I do think there's a lot of people that will enjoy running a 50 for the right reasons, including myself. And along the lines of tires and stepping it up a notch, this is a 29 by 2.4 WTB Ranger. It's mounted on a mountain bike wheel. These are going to be going on Project Curly. Now, I just recently got these mounted up. And, um, you know, up until about a week ago, although today it's overcast and like 65 degrees, it's been like 100 or 104 just a couple weeks ago in Southern California. It's just been kind of a long, hot slide in, in, into whatever kind of autumn we get here. Anyway, so these are going to be going on Project Curly, who I think is going to open up. You know, this is a nice, this is a nice do-all fast rolling kind of tread for non super aggressive trail riding. And I think compared to the plus tires, I think it's gonna make me feel a little bit better about doing some longer trips, especially if it's smoother dirt roads or maybe even pavement to connect my bike packing adventures. Hmm? Remember this handlebar? This is the Redshift top shelf handlebar. Now it came out and caused actually a fair, fairly good little bit of stir because it gave people, I think you could do a 50 and a 70 millimeter rise to your handlebar, which, you know, a lot of people when they're running a drop bar, if you're bikepacking or you're casual riding, or maybe your, your gravel bike came with a very low kind of front end and you, you, you just, you got your stem pointed up and it's not enough. Well, you got this top shelf bar. Now what Redshift has done, well, they've done a couple things, but first of all, what they did was they added a, this really cool little bar bag that is designed to work specifically with the top shelf bar. See, it has two sets of straps and the two sets of straps yeah, work really well with this bar. And I'll be taking a, a closer look at this bar, uh, the bar bag itself, but it's, it's quite a clever really. It has nice little attachment loops on it. It has a magnetic closure top. Isn't that cool? It's actually pretty secure. And then of course it zips too. Anyway, nice little bar bag. Now, Besides the bar bag and besides these that you've already seen, did you know that Redshift, of course, they make their kitchen sink handlebar? Well, their kitchen sink handlebar, that's kind of a wide gravelish bar with like, like this. It has quite a bit of what they call flare, right? Well, what if maybe you've got an a, a, a all-road bike or maybe even a road bike and you say, gee, you know, um, I wish I had a little bit more rise in my handlebar, but I don't want the wide flare, and I certainly don't want a handlebar that's that wide. Well, did you know that they just recently introduced narrower handlebar sizes with more of a roadie type flare to them? And I'll be taking a look at that in a Tech Tuesday video coming up soon, okay? So, some more choices from the creative folks at Redshift on what you can do in a handlebar that'll maybe get you up a little higher and a little bit wider, but not too wide for your roadie type all-road endurance, etc. bike. Nah, options were always good. Now then, finally, before I wrap this video up, you might remember a while back, a few of you were paying attention, that I introduced a project build. And the idea was a travel bike slash non-electrified road bike for Mrs. Granny Gear to use because her Amanda SLR um, really wasn't the perfect bike for this. We wanted something that she could ride um, with a wide range of uses when she didn't want to have her, her uh, electric bike, which she uses her road bike, her BMC for, you know, with her heart condition, she needs that for faster group rides. But sometimes you don't want a motor, right? And we wanted to be able to travel. Uh, I just bought a truck. We're going to be putting bikes and trucks and traveling around. We may even fly somewhere someday. And so carbon like an SLR Amanda, maybe not the best bike for that, but titanium, well, titanium is. So I had bought an, a, um, uh, the last titanium Arty all-road tie that Turner Bikes had. He gave me a great deal on it. It wasn't free. And uh, he said, I'd love to get this thing out of my storage. And so it was like the, the year-end closeout of that model. 
And that is a sweet little bike. I've just about got it built up. Here's a sneak peek of how it looks. Still got to trim the steer tube. We're still gathering some bits and bobs like bags and things like that for it because you know, when you're a lady, man, you want your bike to accessorize nice. Notice the purpley bits. All right. Well, I'll be telling you about that when that's kind of done and we'll be showing it to you. She hasn't even really ridden it yet anywhere than around the block. So we'll be taking a look at that. I think that is going to be a honey of a little bike. That is coming up as well. And that's about it. Me and my orange hat and my green shirt and my Halloween socks and this horse throat I have are just about done talking for you today. You guys have a great week and or weekend. And as always, go ride your bikes and um, trick or treat. <laughs>